Welcome everybody to the Bush and Me Show. It's week eight already. For our guest this week, we've been trying to hold him off for a couple of weeks, you know, because LeBron won the championship. We were hoping he'd forget about it. Oh, but we oh, but we had to bring him on. He's two-time pro bowler, and he's the host of his very own podcast, Trending Thoughts with Tory Smith. Tory, welcome that's, back, man. How's it going? Man, that's that's two-time Super Bowl champion. You know, that's I, two, I, I, that's, I, I was going to let it slide, but I, I, <laughs> I appreciate the correction, man. And the crazy thing is, I was on your pro bowl alternate. I was never that good, but... I uh, got robbed too, by the way, of my ultimate. I should have been there. But anyway, <laughs> been in there. you should have been there, but we're not going to talk no, about yeah, that. Yeah, right we're not going to talk about that. The Super Bowl rings are mine, or they have been. So we good. Yeah. Rings are better. The rings are better. I apologize. Hey, what's going on? Mess up. How y'all doing, oh, man? Before you even talk football, you can't just gloss over the fact that <laughs> LeBron got another ring. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm just going to throw that out there. Don't, don't just gloss that over. Y'all should have called me in right away. <laughs> no, oh my God. Honestly, I forgot. I forgot all about it, Meehan. I don't know why you brought that up because all it does is add fuel to his fire. Because the people who follow us know that Tory was on every single week where we had the, uh, you know, when the Jordan documentary came on, he was out here. He was giving his input on it. I think his respect level ticked up a lot for my for MJ, but he's always had that love for for LeBron. He got another one this year. Uh, it was it, it was look. He did what he had to do. Him and Anthony Davis carried that team, and, and Rondo did his thing as well. The Heat put up a fight, though. The Heat put up a fight. If they didn't have to play every single day, Jimmy Butler, man, was cramping up. They might have put up, put up, made it to Game Seven. I don't know, but well deserved, LeBron. He's four and six now in the finals. So congratulations. Yeah, it's impressive. Four, four rings that a lot of people don't have. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> it's a, it's, it, honestly, the great thing about it, like when you sit back and really look at the stats, it's. 10 finals appearances, three different teams. That's serious, bro. Like that, that's that's uh that's that's pretty serious. I mean, the hats off to him, man. He works hard, he does everything he's supposed to do. He's running up and down the court with the young guys, and he's a, he he's mid-30s, you know, so it's impressive to see that as well. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay silent before we go off subject. So we're gonna we're gonna let me yeah. take it back, take it back. <laughs> Just, Get us going. Just sit. Man. He's sitting over there with the golf clap. Good. Pat my stuff, pat my stuff. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get into the NFL. We've been talking about it for weeks. Uh, it's been more points scored than ever before. Some of the biggest comebacks we're seeing, I mean, I think it was something crazy. Like the first six weeks, every week, somebody had come back, had blown a 16-point lead. We've got some of the biggest injuries out there. Um, some big names, o Odell went down last week. Tory as a former player. What's your insight on on what's going on in the NFL so far this year? I think the NFL has been very entertaining. I also think we have to give the NFL a lot of credit for mm -hmm. even playing a the season. They aren't in the bubble. So a lot of people need to understand that. They are not in the bubble. So you're talking about now the practice squad roster is even bigger. So you're talking about 60 to 70 plus guys going home every night. Their family members still going to the grocery store, still going out to eat, whatever they're doing making this work. Um, I think it's going as good as, probably better than they probably even imagined. And I think the quality on the field, you know, I think it's been great. You know, oftentimes the offense, or excuse me, defenses are ahead of the offense in camp or the off season because you don't have time. Good point. Right now, you're seeing offenses that are acting like they had an off season together. Um, they've right. been falling out, you know, it's been fun to watch. So it's a really, I feel like last year I was kind of watching it from a different perspective, even though I was, you know, the first off season of retirement. But now I've been diving in a lot more, and I really enjoy it. I think you, I think you made a great point because <clears throat> usually, like, like just like you said earlier on in the season, you know, the defenses feel like they kind of have the upper hand, and then you also have the whole crowd aspect when it comes to it as well. You don't have any crowd noise, so the offenses are able to communicate at a high level. They're able to be in the right places at the right time. Just like Meehan says every week, they're putting up scores after scores after scores. The numbers are continuing to rise. Uh, definitely hats off to the NFL, so that's a good point you made. But <clears throat> here, here's a situation I want to give you, Tori. Ryan Fitzpatrick is playing good enough to get the Miami Dolphins to three and three. Now, I want you to put yourself in Ryan Fitzpatrick's shoes. He gets the team to three and three. They come off a 24 to zero blowout versus the Jets. Spirits are high, you gotta be feeling good. They're putting Tua in, the, in at the end of the game. He's over there pumping the crowd up, pumping the crowd up. 
Uh, you go into your bye week, you feel good about your team, you feel good about your position, and boom. They make an announcement Monday that you are going to head to the bench and two is going to get his opportunity. Now, obviously, they drafted this guy for a reason. You know, he's the fifth run. He's the fifth pick overall for a reason. He, they know he's the future. But how would you feel? What would your reaction be uh, in that situation, getting that news? That's tough, man. You know, in this league, you're taught that if you perform, everything will take care of itself. Now, you understand when a person's drafted, how you expect him to play, but he's been all play. Like, right. so his performance and his leadership is the reason why they've been able to win, you know, those three games. And so that hurts as a player to see. Um, so I think he handled it better than anyone could have, you know? Yes. I think the timing, I'm not saying that it, it should have never been a switch, because the minute they're out of the playoff race, or it's you know it's it, it's it's not possible. Then I think you do it right. Cause right. He's not. He's a, he isn't getting any younger, and your future is right there behind. But the timing just doesn't make any sense. And I think he handled it you know as best he could. He he understands his sleep. Um, crazy things happen all the time. Um, and I love the way he he put it in real life terms. You know, he got fired, and he has to sit there with his boss. So imagine getting fired for actually doing your job well. Right. And sit there with your boss and the person that fired you. I thought, I thought the way he talked about that was amazing. And I feel for him because he's older. Um, those moments and opportunities to be the guy, that's not happening anymore. Right. Yeah, he can, he can be a backup guy, come up someone gets hurt, but it's not going to be the same. So that hurts for him. Um, I'm sure, like, again, the energy, like I said, he was pumping him up when he won the game. He didn't think, that's what I'm saying. He didn't think he'd be pumping him up to to pump him up to stay on the sideline. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they clap it so hard, you know what I mean? But, right. Uh, I think, I think it's like a lot about him, man, um, and, and who he is as a person, a stand-up guy. And, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a two fan, so I'm excited to see him play as well. Um, but I just think as a professional, you know, at that time, he's so. That's good insight, man, because a lot of times these fans forget that, you know, this is a job, this is a career, even though it is a game and entertainment. But, you know, to relate it to getting fired and having to hang out with this boss, that's good insight there, too. There's another quarterback in Philly uh, who's having kind of an up and down year. Granted, there are a lot of injuries on that roster. You played with Carson Wentz. You played in Philly. You know how restless those fans can get. And there's another young quarterback who's sitting there, you know, breathing down his neck and Jalen Hurts. What do you think uh, the future holds in Philly for Carson Wentz in that situation? Yeah, Carson said the future, you know. Um, he's still going to be sitting back there just breathing on that sideline, you know. <laughs> Carson Wentz is still the guy on his thing. Um, when you, would a guy like, with that athletic ability and that ability to scramble help with an offensive line like this? Sure, but you still have to execute the offense well and at a high level. Um, but yeah. Carson's still that guy. Um, I think when you're watching his team play, you're seeing some amazing plays. He's had some picks that are tough. Um, and so that been some horrible decisions, but I think when you're watching what he's dealing with, he's really carrying this team in a lot of moments. And you see the will, you see the fight, you see the Philly spirit in him, and some of the plays he's made at the end of the game for this team to win. And listen, I, I tell people all the time, they're lucky that their division is trash right now. Right. <laughs> therefore, so therefore, everything is still in front of you. So like, there's really no need to panic, even as a team or as a city or a fan. Like, when your division sucks and you're in the race, there's no need to panic. Like, it'll all sort of stuff out at the end. It's like, man, it's like, look at a bunch of preseason games. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's going to turn into some short series as it goes. And yeah. that's what you're seeing out of Philadelphia. They're only going to get better as they get more help. And so they struggled early on with, they, he, Carson played a few weeks ago with one guy who had ever started a game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, guys who weren't even on this team two years ago. Got, a guy who was playing rugby was starting <laughs> on, on his blind side a few weeks ago who had never played football. So it's like, and, and his weapons, he had one guy in Greg Ward who had caught a pass in the NFL game, and Greg Ward came up off a practice squad last year. Mm. Now, Greg Ward was there, he's a rookie when I was there, and I can tell you he could play, and I knew he would be great in the slot. But still, the point being is that there's a lot of youth there, so there's going to be growth in some of their faces. You see it on film as well. So when those guys get healthy, 
they're going to be a better team. So therefore, all the panic that is in Philly at all times after any loss. Yeah. It, 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 it don't matter. You can win 10 games <laughs> in Philly. As soon as you win your one, you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is terrible. Get him out of here. <laughs> I, the, the one thing I do appreciate about you coming on and sharing your perspective is because I'm I'm very critical. Whenever I see Carson Wentz, I see him and he's making these great plays or he's scrambling. He's making these tremendous throws. Like you said, he don't have many weapons around him. But the issue is, it's like he has to do a better job of taking care of the ball, getting the ball out on rhythm. That doesn't really help your O-line as well. That really kind of depletes their confidence. But, uh, you know, just to have your insight on it, I think that's pretty big because uh, just like you said, the NFC East is is so bad that this team is either at the top right now or they're, or they're tied with the top. So every like you said, everything is still out in front of them. They're going to get healthier. I can't wait till Alshon Jeffrey gets back. You know, uh, I know he's been banged up for a while, but yeah, I'm, I, I needed I needed your insight. I needed you to come on here and tell us why Carson Wentz was still the guy in Philadelphia because you know it's like one week I watch him and it's like, oh man, he's playing great, and another week it's like. I'm kind of done with this guy. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I needed that. I needed that. That's on me, man. Just like when you talk about LeBron and Jordan. Like, I knew uh, no, no, that was coming. I, right, right. right. to I thought we were thing. staying on track. I thought we were staying on track. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to that position, man, people forget. And again, and we talk about a league that you can't consistently live in the past. But you're talking yes. about a guy that was the best player in the NFL the year we went to the Super Bowl. He was Very one true. healthy game away from being the MVP. And now, I'm not going to say his knee is the reason why he's performing the way he is, but I think the timing and the confidence hasn't been the same. And injuries haven't been the same. Because you still see those flashes. I mean, when they were losing earlier in the year and he's making some bad decisions, like people are like, wait, is he the guy? Like, literally questioning if he is the guy. Right, I mean, that right. to me is like, whoa, 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 whoa. all right, up, up the brakes. Yeah, not yeah, playing yeah. the best, but this is your guy. I think sometimes people don't realize how hard it is to find a franchise quarterback. Right. Carson Wentz is a franchise quarterback. Tough stretch or not, he is a franchise quarterback. And they don't just grow on trees. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's hard. And so when you have one, you have to nurture it, you have to pour into it. So if I told you that the perfect example of Carson Wentz and what he was dealing with early in the year is the same guy that people were talking about was the MVP potentially until last week, Aaron Rodgers. What mm -hmm. happened last year? People thought Aaron Rodgers was washed up. Yeah. His weapons yeah. hurt. They weren't building around him, right? His offensive line was struggling. Yeah. So we tend to toss guys into the blender and not realize that football is a team sport and you need everything to go right around you, which is the blessing and the curse for the quarterback position. You get all the credit when you're doing well. And then, you know, when things are stinking, you know, you got to take that awesome. heat and play. You know, and that's why yeah. quarterbacks should be balanced to give the big guys their credit at all times. One of those two go. It's a wrap. Go. Yeah, and that, and that makes that makes for a tough season, and that's just the that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to the league. Everybody on paper feels good in training camp. You feel good about your opportunity, you know, about your situation going into the NFL season. I want to jump into some big games, though. I want to jump into rivalry games. You've played in your fair share. I played in my fair share. You know, the Saints and Falcons were always a good one. Uh, I think the longest, you know, longest uh, rivalry dating back. You know, to his, the history of the NFL would be the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers. But you've played in the Steelers Ravens one. Tell me a little bit about, you know, when you were a Raven, tell me a little bit about Steeler Week. Was it a little bit more animosity? Was now, wait, it, wait, 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 let me set, let me set the stage for you here a little bit. Okay, do that then. Jason Lockenford said this on his show this week, this was one of the biggest rivalries in all of sports, Steelers Ravens. Now, Tori, you played in this rivalry nine times. Oh, wow. Eight, eight times in the regular season, and you were five and three against Pittsburgh in the regular season. Once in the playoffs, you guys won 30 to 17. In 2011, you had the game-winning catch. I'm sure you remember that. Eight seconds left. I believe that was in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yep. Yeah. In Pittsburgh, you won that one. You also played against the Steelers as a 49er, 
So you kind of have the insight on, you know, playing them outside of the rivalry, in the rivalry. I'm born and raised in Baltimore. We as Raven fans know what it means to this city. You can put that towel away. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we oh, know what this means. Man, we, we, we went up there to win. We went up there in Chicago one time and we won. I had to snatch one of them terrible tags. Yeah, ta- terrible towels. You know, it's a story. It's a story to tell. It's a story behind me having that. Okay, keep going, me, Stat Man. I was just going to say, we as Ravens fans know what it means to the city, but describe to the fans and everybody what that rivalry means inside the locker room and, and that whole week leading up to the game. That's real, man. Uh, that rivalry and to me when I went to the University of Maryland, even in high school, right? Everyone has their rivalry. I went to Staff High School, our rival was North Staff. Right? I went to Maryland, our rival was UVA. And then you go here, and it still is, but it's a little bit different. You yeah. know, it's like rivalry week, wherever you are, is a real deal. But at the professional level, I mean, you go to the grocery store. Hey, hey. You can lose four games. Still a week now. Still a week. You know what time it is. Yeah, it's real, man. And the coaches are uptight. You know, they feel it is different. And you know those games, like, those. Are, you do all this preparing. And you know that everything going into that game, we can make all of our projections we want about this game. Rivalry games, the stats, the tendencies, all that goes out the window. You know, all it's gonna be physical. It's going to be about who wants it more that day, which is really what any Sunday is like. But in a robbery week, man, you just never know what's going to happen. It's going to be big moments. It's going to be big plays. And it's not too often that there's a blowout. I mean, I played that game, you said, nine times, and only maybe once or twice it got out of hand. You know, it's all the other times it was all by three points. Out of the last 14 times they played, I believe it was like three, like three points. You know, 14 out of those games. So, I mean, it's a big deal. And, you know, those teams know you better. They know each other in a robbery game. You know each other better than anyone else. And it's just different, man. And to be in that game, when I played in it, and it's, it has that feel right now, but when I played in it, we were really good. So yeah. you knew that it was going to decide who was going to win the division when it came down to the end. It was going to decide playoff seed, who was going to get the one, the two, or the three, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was real, man. And to have that opportunity to catch a game winner, I mean, that's that, special. That was that was crazy, man. Cause like it's you know that's the one thing, one play that people will bring up like wherever I've gone to Pittsburgh. Uh, Jordan's like my little sister played basketball up there, so I go up there to games and Pittsburgh fans would just be mugging me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just talking about it because it's real. But they remember it, so that's the beautiful part about the rivalry. The fans get into it. I had fans on the side that I would talk trash to, but I would see them. They sit in the same sections. I remember seeing them over the years. Yeah. You know, I went to San Francisco and played, and I knew, all right, this isn't a rivalry anymore. This is just another game. Like, right, right. It wasn't the same field, and you see the same fans that you were talking smack with over the years. You know, it was pretty cool to those kind of connections that you had. For the yeah, sake of this bit. show, for the sake of this show, what what was your favorite game winning catch? The one against the Bears and Bushra? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> like, we're not even talking about this right now. We talked about this before. I'm going to go with, uh, oh, no. why? Because. <laughs> Which one did he go with? I couldn't hear. Both of them. Good. One, wow. I, one is like, you know, a legendary moment in Ravens history. Of course. The other is a legendary moment in Northern Neck history. So both, uh, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, both, listen. Both listen. a lot of weight. <laughs> Listen, oh. listen. Hey, I was so happy to see this dude before the game. We dabbed him up. Hey, bro, it's all love. It's good to see you. You know, keep doing your thing. And I just remember that ball going up. And I was like, I know this fool's not about to catch this ball on us. Uh, yeah, it is. Overtime. Game's over. I seen him after the game. I was like, all right. I gave him a little dab. I was like, all right, man. It's good to see you, man. I'm, I'm out of here. Like, I'm out. I was I was a little bitter. I was a little bitter after that one, for sure. But uh, it was a good game. That was a real good game. I can talk to back to the, you know, to the Steelers fans and then... As long as we grow old and we go home, we got the kids. Hey, <laughs> Russell, I remember that time. Uh, I brought it home. You know what? So, you hey, know. you know what? I'm fitting, I'm fitting to take your jersey down. You see it right up there in the top part. <laughs> I'm fitting to take that. <laughs> nah, it's all love. It's all love. Speaking of games, we might as well go ahead and get into these picks, me. You know Let's I'm get ready. get into them. I'm ready for Let's these get, picks. Bush has a one-game lead on me. 
Uh, so I got to catch him this week. Tori, a little pressure on you because our first celebrity guest was 0-3. So Kyle Long came on last week with no pressure. He's 2-1. and one, So you got to go 3-0 and o to hold the crown as the best celebrity guest on the show. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll each go one at a time, though. I'll start it off. I'm going to start it off in Cincinnati. Oh. I'm going to take the Bengals getting five and a half over the Titans. Since he's at home, they're one five and one on the year. But what people don't know is they're five and two against the spread. So they're good at keeping the game close. I think they're going to keep this one close. Tennessee's coming off that hard fought match against the Steelers. And I'm looking for Joe Burrow to put up some points against people don't know this either. Tennessee's pass defense is ranked 26 in the league. I think Joey's going to pick them apart and keep it close. I'm taking Cincinnati. Okay. All right. All right. I like that one. Uh, my first game. Hey, baby. Two was getting it. Two was getting the gig. I'm going. My, I'm going Miami over the Rams, brother. Listen, this is first start. Like I told y'all earlier, I was a little skeptical of the move, but Miami has to do. <clears throat> Miami needs to stop the run because I feel good about the Dolphins secondary against Woods Cup and whatever other receiver that Jared Goff decides he wants to throw to. But here's the, here's going to be the deciding factor in the game. Can the Dolphins' offensive line, which have played pretty solid over six games, I've watched them. I've watched every single game at least twice. They've played really solid over six games. They're very young. That's the one thing I really love about it, and they're continuing to grow. But <clears throat> you know their eyes are going to be on the on the guards and the center because Aaron Donald's coming to town. This guy has – it's we're going into week eight, and this man has eight sacks already. He probably has double, triple the amount of quarterback pressures. That's really going to be the deciding factor. Is it going to be a welcome to the NFL moment for Tua, or are they going to be able to stop him? Uh, I have faith that they'll at least be able to contain him and give Tua enough time to get the ball off because he, he is a really accurate quarterback. Man, man, look, they're, they're excited, man. South Florida is excited. I'm going Miami over the Rams. I like that pick, man, but Aaron Donald's still going to be on him like a backpack like he was on Alex Smith. No one got that cat. <laughs> not once. Not one person. Well, not to be a homer here, but it's it's rival week here. So you know how to start it off with the Ravens and the Steelers. Okay. Okay. And I'm all about the Ravens, man. I, I did all this breaking it down to y'all about how the odds, all that goes out the window in a rivalry game. Well, the Ravens are favored in this, but it's only about four points. And the offense has been struggling in Baltimore. This is Lamar's first time playing Big Ben. Lamar's going to turn up. That Ravens offense is suddenly going to yeah. find that light. And I believe it's going to be a game where it's like a two-score game. Oh, a two store. A two, two score. Scores. All right, listen. Win for the Ravens. Win. Win. I Just like a, it. a Ravens win. Well, listen, Mehan, I'm gonna take your I'm gonna take your spot right here because I'm also going Ravens over the Steelers. So I might as well go ahead and get it out there. I'm going Ravens over the Steelers, even though I've been on the Steelers bandwagon this year. But the Ravens are coming off a bye. They should be energized. They should be rested up. They should be ready to go. Uh the one thing that the Steelers do do, they uh, they tend to blitz a lot. Now, I think that's I think it's an opportunity for the Ravens to maybe hit them on some big plays. You know, Lamar can get out. He can run the ball. The, Ra the Steelers will have to do a pretty good job of containing, which I'm pretty sure they're going to do. But they also are leaving the door open for some big plays. Me, I'm sorry I took your slot in that one. But I'm going Ravens over Steelers. I'm pretty sure you got that in your in your three games as well. So you just you just jumped me to take my favorite hometown team. <laughs> No respect. I just, I just, no I respect. just thought, I, oh, no respect. How about how about you bringing up the uh, 49ers and the Bears game? That's no respect. So now, now you can go. <laughs> touche. Touche. Eye for an eye. I as well picked this game. And like the two of you, I as well took the Ravens minus four. Like Tori said, I think this game could get ugly. Hardball's 10 and two coming out of a bye week. I think, you know, the offense had been struggling a little bit. Lamar's had two weeks that weren't up to Lamar par. But I think they, you know, they put some things together. I think Greg Roman is going to have be ready for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's been worrying about the Browns two weeks ago. They're worried about the Titans last week. I think for two weeks they've been drilling it in there. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. It's been rivalry week for two weeks here. Last week in Baltimore, people are like, "You going to the game?" I'm like, "They don't have a good game this weekend." So <laughs> they're letting fan, they're letting some fans in the stands. I'm with Tori on this one. I think it's a two score game. Love Tori, it. you can go unless your mom wants to jump you too. I don't know. <laughs> this, this, team, this team's been getting jumped all year that I'm about to pick. So the Chiefs are playing the Jets. I don't care if it would have been a 50-point pick. I'm picking the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> they, 
They're gonna be they're gonna beat them by a hundred. We're gonna see all kinds of records being brought. The Jets are just horrible, man. So anytime you can pick against them, pick it. Up on it. They're gonna win, and whatever the spread said, they're gonna beat it and then some. It's 20, by the way. Almost three touchdowns. It might be 40. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you want to go? Thank you. I guess I'll go. But yeah, I'm going to jump on your back. I didn't know you were taking this game. I like this game, too. I took Miami getting the three and a half against the Rams. You know I've been using this, this uh, method for years. The hometown team on Monday night, they win. Then they travel on a short week on the road and they're favored. They only win 32% of the time. So I'm going with Miami on this one. Coming off a bye, two weeks to prepare. Tua against Donald, like you said, scares me a little bit, but I hope they screen him. I hope they get the ball out of his hand quick. You know, three-step drop, boom, boom, boom. I'm taking Miami in the three and a half. Good pick, me. Good pick. You know, well, you know, it's my third pick. You know who I'm going with. And this was a tough one for me. Saints. This is a tough Next one. one. <laughs> this was a, well, listen, they're playing my Bears, man. You know, so, you know, I, I got some love for the Bears, but I got, I got a lot more love for the Saints. And honestly, I just think the Saints are the better team. Um, but look, since Foles did take over, they haven't even been close to getting 100 yards rushing as a team. If the Bears want an opportunity to win this game, they need to find a way to be balanced. Because if you're trying to get into a passing match with Drew Brees, he's you know those first couple weeks he, he he didn't really look like Drew. But like I said earlier in the cast, uh, earlier on our podcast, you know weeks ago, Drew's the type of quarterback I feel like you need those couple preseason games. You need the timing issue to get down. You need the guys to be in the right spot. Now I do think the Bears' defense is good, but overall. Yeah, I, do. I think their defense is good overall, but they tend to give up some yards in the rushing game. And you got Alvin Kamara looking like he did back his rookie season. I'm going Saints over Bears, man. I just think they got way more firepower, and they don't run the ball enough in Chicago for me to think that they would even have a chance. I know you just didn't baby Drew Brees like that. And <laughs> Come, on <now. laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Emmanuel Sanders. He had all his tight ends. Everyone's still there. And he was out no. there looking like a pop wonder quarterback in first few Ooh. weeks. Oh. Ooh. I'm just so going to call that out there. The first few weeks, that wasn't the Drew Brees. I, a, a, I a, sent an emotional title. tweet because I was like, this doesn't look like the Drew Brees that I know. And I was because he need them, he need them games. He needs those games. You know, he's almost 43 years old. Like he gotta warm the arm up. He gotta know where his guys are. Now look at like him. the 10 man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get you gotta, that oil on. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, the older the car is, the longer you gotta warm that thing up. You know, you gotta, you gotta give it a little bit more practice. That's why I feel like in the last three weeks, he's starting to look like the same old Drew. He's completing the ball at almost seventy three percent of the time. He's getting almost three hundred yards a game. Uh, last week, he didn't even have his two top dogs, and he's still almost, he's still uh, through for for almost three hundred to a guy, Marquez Callaway. I never heard of this guy before, but he stepped up big last week. They might get Michael Thomas back. I did see him in pads today, uh, at practice today, but I don't know. I don't think Emmanuel Sanders is going to play either. I, they're still a little depleted, but listen, I, I think. All I right, think all right. Got you it, already bro. said your I pick. Think you got said your I think they got. It. It. It's the same. <laughs> I don't hear anything about depleted, and you didn't give Carson that same grace. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is Carson throwing to? Name Carson. Who, who, hey, who, no, who is starting receivers? Hey, they get paid. Who they are gotta, they? They got to get right on. So know. tell Drew. So I, tell what they called. Who is it? Tell Drew. Tell Drew. Last week, the receivers the first two weeks got who paid. Is, all I'm saying is, who was the Saints receivers last week? Who's the uh, Eagles receivers all year? Hey, don't, don't, hey, don't, at, don't, at the end of the day, he got to get the ball out, Tori. He got to get the ball out. His O line don't even believe in him. They're like, is this guy going to get the ball uh, out this week or not? We just saw some favorite <laughs> but let me tell you how I feel, man. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe, I can't believe what I just witnessed. But anyway. <laughs> The I'm, problem is Philadelphia, Philadelphia's those strict parents that hold you accountable, and New Orleans are the ones that coddle them, and they're like, oh, hey, baby. <laughs> well, that's the difference between the Philly market and New Orleans. That's, that's why New Orleans is my favorite city, because it's all about love and good food. <laughs> And yeah. first part is a product. That's what it's about, man. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta empathize. And, you know, be, you know the situation. The situation was that he didn't have his preseason game. Now he's ready to go. Now it's a whole different team. It's a whole. The whole team looked different. 
because he's playing on a different level. I'm just Drew Brees, you know. the, Drew Brees is the only quarterback that didn't have a preseason. A preseason. Take note of that, man. But anyways, <laughs> hey, hey, say, say, same with Tom Brady now. Tom was looking a little rough. He was looking a little rough two, three weeks. Now look at him. Don't, I know you don't like Tom. I know you don't I, like I like Tom Brady. That's one of my favorite players. I just, I hated playing against him. Fact. Uh, you won a Super Bowl against him. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, we got a better record, but, uh, you know, anybody seen him. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Tom Brady. I love him. He's confident. He's cocky. And he know he know he's the GOAT. Um, the Chargers, I like the Chargers, man. I like the battle of the young quarterbacks. Um, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Justin Herbert right now. I feel bad how my guy Tyrod was uh, mm. seriously with the needle. But, yeah. you know, Tyrod, um, Tyrod's in a position, uh, excuse me, Justin's in a position right now. He's playing extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's you know, positioning himself to be rookie of the year on the offensive side of the ball right now. He, he's a star. Um, and I love how everyone said it's a project. You're talking about a rookie that was forced into the game minutes, told he's to start minutes before the game. So they've already warmed up. He's not the starter right now. And then he, he, he think he's going to be chilling. Yeah, he think he's going to be chilling. <laughs> and he didn't have an off season. He didn't have any preseason games. And no one made any excuses for this cat. He just went out there. He, he's young. He just, he young. He was just throwing it. He's young. He... So I'm going to roll with the Chargers. I like, I like the way they look at the offense right now. Chargers over the Broncos. I'm with that. I, but hey. I look, hold, here, here's the one thing I will say. You can't give him the, you can't give him the rookie of the year not over, uh, over Joe Burrow. Why Joe not? Burrow looks good. Yeah, it's been <laughs> seven weeks. Joe He's Burrow, been consistent. Joe, Joe, Joe Burrow, Joe, you're right. Joe Burrow is, looks, looks damn good, actually. Yeah. But I think, well, they both aren't going to win. So, I mean. S situationally, though, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely impressed with, with, uh, with Justin. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. The way he, like, just like you said, the way he came in and played, and when I seen him play down in New Orleans, he torched their secondary. So I was like, all right, this, this guy's the real deal. But they're both. And that was a big stage. That was Monday night. But you, two, you talk about two cats. I mean, Justice threw like three hundred. Thank you. You were back to back. To the, I mean, the only thing is Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow came in with the pressure. Joe Burrow is on a worse team. He when he played the, uh, the Ravens two weeks ago, he been sacked fifteen times already. I know. He has one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Um, AJ Green was wasn't up to speed yet. Even coming off of his injury, he wasn't looking the same. But I mean. It's going to be a battle. It's also at the end, but I think the way you think about the pressure and what you had to deal with, you're right. It probably would have to lean towards Joe Burrow. But he put his name in that conversation. It's going to be real. Oh, facts. It's, it's, it's some good. It's some good football being played by those guys. All right. So hopefully you can go three and zero. You can be our top. Uh, you can hold the top spot on the record board. And hopefully I can yeah. jump Bush this week. I got to go three and zero again. Bush, you were zero and three last week, by the way. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember. I was, I but was it's there. but it's okay. Well, yeah, thank you, thank you. That's all. That's all I want. I want I, all I want you to do is tell me it's go. It's okay. I'm gonna be all right next week. <laughs> hey man, you got to deal with certain people in a different way, man. You know, I, I, I don't. I don't respond. I don't. I don't respond well if you yell at me. But if you if you rub my head and tell me it's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be all right. Then I'll be good next week. Okay. So that's. Just make sure you give my boy in Philly that same grace. That's all I want. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Hey, that's that's why I wanted you to come on and give me your perspective. Now, when I look at it, I'm just like, okay, I see what he's talking about. See, you know, I can be understanding. That's but he better, light, he, he better light it up this week, though. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. It's been fun. It's been fun. This is, this, this is real, Tori. We appreciate you, bro. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having me back. And listen, I'll come back anytime y'all want to talk about LeBron. Anytime y'all need somebody to talk about the Eagles or anybody to trash the Cowboys, y'all know where to come. I'm here. Cowboys look sad. Talk about America's team. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> they look sad. Think about the fact that they had two dudes that they had to cut in the middle of the season. They cut two guys, one of them being a starter and Poe, in the middle of the season. Yep. That's yep. unheard of. The league, Man, they get, they, they're dysfunctional right now. Like, they yeah. have to get that together. Like seriously, but that they're doing stuff that sorry teams do and sorry organizations do. The yeah. Dallas Cowboys aren't a sorry organization. Not at all. They're just a bad football team right now. But when they turn the potential they have, they shouldn't even be a bad football team. But when you get the leaks and teams are fighting, you hear people talking about coaches and the media and players are going to the media. 
they have to quiet that noise or, you know, they're going to turn from America's team to, I don't know who you want to call it. America's nightmare. <laughs> There's no <laughs> leadership. There's got- <laughs> You're right. I, honestly, this, them losing Dak might be the worst thing that happened to this organization. There's no leadership in there anymore. Nobody's sticking up or saying anything. And and McCarthy's. It feels like McCarthy's too new to kind of like tie the reins up. And he's been there before. If he's won the Super Bowl, man, he needs to uh, put his foot down. You know, right now it seems like hey, the man he, is getting his own way. He don't. He don't have Aaron Rodgers to bail him out these situations now. You know, it's just this a whole different monster now. You go from Green Bay, that's a whole different team dynamic. You go down to Dallas, that's a lot. That's a different pressure. The, the players look at the players have a whole different perspective as well. You know, I mean, you you are quote unquote America's team, so a lot of guys kind of feed into that BS. You know, they kind of they kind of feed into that BS. And just going back to your point, Tori, they're literally imploding from within. From, from inside, you know, they have, like you said, you got guys leaking things and talking about the coach to staff. You either got to put a name behind that sh- behind that stuff or just don't say nothing at all. Just hold your tongue, go to work and go home. Like just either don't say it or put your name behind it. I, I think that's one of the weakest oh, moves anybody can do. Like, the, uh, you know, Bush, all like everybody else, the difference, a leak is a leak, right? Players yeah. don't have any, no, don't know anything different than what the media see. But you see a tweet, Players know who that cat was or who it could have potentially been. And these yeah. teams find out who that guy is. So you just continue to have issues from with yep. them, man. And it's not, not pretty down. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Hey, man. Tori, it was a pleasure. Me, you good? We got anything else? I'm, I'm good, man. Thanks for coming on. I hope I hope we're all right. Baltimore tears up Pittsburgh. Tori, thanks for coming on. Thanks for the insight. Bye, man. Appreciate you having me. See you guys next time. We out.